Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is Hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hyperconscious Podcast is proudly sponsored by our friend and mentor, David Meltzer, of the Playbook Podcast. He was kind enough to join us on episode 144 and 135. Folks, it has become Kevin and I's mission in life to help you realize that the life of your dreams is right on the other side of you becoming the greatest version of yourself. Let us help you do that. I rarely do these things twice in such a short amount of time, but you guys impress me. I, I believe in people that provide value and of our service. You two guys are on your way to huge fulfillment, purpose, and profitability, and I look forward to helping you both. We appreciate that more than you know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where Alan and I sat down and talked all about career, but finding your thing. Finding your thing. Finding your thing is a, a sexier a sexier name for it. Uh, today, for episode 229, we are going to do a scratching the surface episode on the power of purpose. The power of purpose. So I prepped on the plane, believe it or not, wow. for this episode. Um, it was a five and a half hour flight. I slept for the first three hours and then I prepped for at least 30 minutes. For I this did one. not sleep almost at all. At all. It's because he's soft. soft. Okay. Scratching the surface on the power of purpose. But oh, before I'm we to- get started. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get started, I want you to join our private Facebook group of a like minded community who is all hyperconscious trying to chase their goals and dreams. If you go to the hyperconsciouspodcast.com, Click on join hashtag hyperconscious nation. You will be prompted with three very relevant questions yes, to help yes. Kevin and I cater this content to you specifically and what you're going through. Also, Kevin has things to say. Yeah, so if you're watching this on YouTube, hopefully if you're listening, you can't tell a difference in the audio quality. I don't think you will because, I mean, maybe the room's a little bit louder. But if you're watching this, you'll see that we are still in the hotel and we will be for the foreseeable next couple episodes because they're gonna we're going to be traveling all over the place. So um, if you or somebody you know is looking for somebody to come speak at a corporation, a business, a gym, a school, whatever it is. And our goal when we speak is not only to motivate and inspire you while you're in the room, but it's to help create lifelong mindset changes. That is why we do this. That is why we do this podcast. And that is what we're passionate about. So we will come speak to whoever it is, however many people it is. We just want to keep changing the world. Huge shout out about Mass Maritime coming up in November. Thank you, Jesse, for hooking us up with thank that. Thank you so much, Jesse. And thank you, Tiffany, for being incredible. Yes. Okay, so scratching the surface on the power of purpose. Some Are you ready? would say. Yes. I am ready. I am ready. Are you prepared? I am prepared. All right, here we go. 22 minutes left. Okay, we often talk on this podcast about why. To me, I believe why is the most important thing. Another way to understand what we mean by what's your why is what's your purpose. Or what's the purpose of of you doing what you are doing. Okay, question for Kevin. Kevin, why did you choose this topic specifically? What is the purpose of this episode? And what do you hope the listeners get out of it? So I chose this. So just as a behind the scenes, Alan and I have a list of topics that we try to, but we haven't been for the last couple days. Right. Adding to every day. That way when we have something that's relevant or somebody reaches out to us, we can talk about it. The, the power of purpose is the only reason Alan and I are sitting in this hotel room in Costa Mesa, California, all the way across the country. It's the only reason, as we mentioned in the previous episode, that we were in David Meltzer's Sports One Marketing Studio yesterday, um, literally walked into his, his building, talked to the dude at the front desk, I don't remember his name, uh, I should be better about that, I will be better about that, not should ah, be, um, 
Should Dave be his own producer, down, no, honey. Exactly. <laughs> Dave came down and was talking to us, and we said, oh, yeah, we're going to Brendan's event. He said, oh, I might be going, too. Right. Let, maybe I'll come down and hang out with you guys. Cool, great. Maybe, we'll, maybe I'll introduce you to Tom Billy. Right, as, yeah. a, as a little teaser. Yeah, that would be fine. I, <laughs> I guess we can make that work. Yeah, right. Um, then we walk into the studio. There's four microphones set up. The lights are set up. The camera's set up. The timer's set up. The TV's set up. And it's like... Go. Some, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's four guys in the room, right. along with Alan, myself, and Dave. Um... Some people might say, like, oh, it's because of this. Like, you guys got lucky, or it's because you guys have been consistent, or it's because you guys have, you have connections, or whatever. Sure, we do have connections. We are lucky sometimes. But the, the thing is, behind the scenes, we're making that happen. And the only reason we're making that happen is because it's attached to our purpose. Right. And there is no other way for me. I've never been as motivated I've never been as efficient I've never been as focused I've never been as fulfilled as I am now it's an entirely different life and I just want everybody to feel the power of purpose I want them to feel what it feels like when you're in alignment with your best self and you make the decisions based on not what other people will think of you but how it'll affect your goal and your dream and your purpose and your passion right like that's how we base everything now I know and it's it's a different life, and I want you guys, if you're watching this or if you're listening, to live it because it's not, it's not whether or not you're capable of. You are capable of doing it. It's just a matter of what's going to help get you there, and I, I hope this episode is that. Before I jump into this next question with Kevin, I, I really want – I've said this before on the podcast, and I'm probably going to say this honestly forever because Your World Within Live changed me because it made me – realize something it made me experience something that I've always sort of known maybe not always but I've we talk about a lot in terms of why why you are in the room matters most in my opinion at your world within live we were at a hotel called Margaritaville yes most people are in that hotel on that day to be on the beach to be with their family to really be on vacation which is to escape their day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. every single person at your world within live was there for a different reason, and it was very noticeable to me. I got to see the guests at that hotel, and then us. And it was two very different reasons for being there, even though we're in the same geographical location. One person is there to vacation away from their normal life. The other person is there to redesign a better one. That is what will always make the difference. I, I'm so unbelievably passionate about that. Next question for Kevin. Sure. Scratching the surface on the power of purpose. Some would say. Personally, and the listeners know this, I have what I refer to as a purpose prayer that I receive, recite every day. Kevin knows it. I've shared it with my mother and a few other people closest to me. It is the deepest and most private part of me, and it guides me every day, especially when things appear most dark. Question. For you, Kevin, what is your deepest purpose, and how does it guide your decisions every day? My deepest purpose is to be the person that I needed not only when I was sitting on the edge of the hotel bed in New Jersey debating suicide and feeling like I was trapped and I was helpless and hopeless, but to be the person, to be the example that I think I could have used for my entire life. If I knew what I knew, if I knew what I know now when I was 16, everything would be different. Well, I remember you telling me that um, you didn't feel like you had a ton of guidance. Right. About certain things. Yeah. Like, obviously, you had a lot of love and support from your grandma and right. your mom. Yeah. And yeah. they were always there for you, and I got to witness that. I've gotten to witness that many times. But when it comes to guidance in terms of how to succeed... You can only, you can only teach others what you've done yourself. Right. And it's, it's not, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. I love my mother, I love my grandmother, but they don't have the, the life I want. Right. Right? And that's... So yeah. how can they guide you to it? Right, right. And like when, when it was coming like time to pick out colleges, like I had no idea. I had no guidance. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how I was going to afford it. Like I didn't know that. Right. Um, and we didn't have male role models, really. Right, yeah. So for me, it's like there's a reason I want to be – one of my purposes is to be a great parent. I'm learning that quickly like, and a great husband. Right. Like a, a great example of like that's what a man should be. Right. If that's like you and I talked about that yesterday, and this is a kind of a breakthrough about that. Like, I don't, I knew some great men growing up, um, but I learned very quickly that they weren't actually, they were great, but they had, they all had their things. Right. And I don't want to have any things. 
I don't I want to be the greatest man I can. And for me, like, you know, that's why I, I want to help people without people knowing about it. Like, I don't care who knows what I'm doing. You know, I know why I'm doing it. And that's what matters most. That, like, that just, that matters so much to me. So when you say you want to be a great man, going off script here, a lot of people say that. I want to be a better me yes. or a greater person or a greater man. There's a big difference between saying it and then looking in the mirror at your weaknesses and yeah. then changing them. Yeah. What's an example of something that you are on some level ashamed of or, or maybe something that about yourself that you really need to fix or wanted to fix in order to be that aspiring example, which again is just your version of what you think a great man is. Yeah, I used to have a really, really, really bad temper. Like, I've talked about that in the past. I used to have a bad temper. Like, I used to punch holes in things all the time. Like, if I wasn't, my hands weren't bleeding, I wasn't doing a good job of getting my, my aggression out. Mm. Um, it never, that never happened with women. Other, one time it happened. I was, I've told, I think I've told this story in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I was in my bodybuilding prep and I just cooked like a giant batch of chicken and I <laughs> dropped it on the floor and I smashed the fridge and put a dent in the fridge. And my girlfriend at the time started crying because she was like afraid. And I said, I would never do that to you. Like, I would never hurt you. I've never hurt you. I've never hurt anybody. Right. I would never do that to you. But in that moment, you learn like, maybe she's, maybe somebody else has told her that too. And maybe they did hurt her. Right. Right? Like, so... For me, it's like, I said this, sometimes, like, Taryn and I will be talking, and she might say something, and my initial reaction is, it's, you feel it bubbling up. Oh, yeah. And it, not like anger, it's like, I want to say something. Like, I want to I react. Right. But you can't, you can't. You, well, you, you can say things that you can't take back. Yeah, and I'd rather people will, think will, about people it. People can forgive you, but they won't forget. Yeah, and I told you, like, that's, she's one of my biggest whys. Right. Like, I want, I, I, I want to make her friends jealous, but not, you know, not no, actually. I know what you're saying. But I want to be that example of like, how is he that way? Like, how does he do that? I want that more than ever, more than ever. But, and that's why I'm willing to do the things I'm willing to do. Um, because that's part of my purpose. Right. My purpose is to be, the purpose of the Hyperconscious Podcast is to not only give Alan and I a life of freedom, but to prove to countless others that they can have whatever life they're willing to work for. Work for. I know. The only difference is what work for means to Alan and myself might mean something different to you. It doesn't mean traveling across the country for you. Maybe it means being a good father or a good mother or a good lover or dog shelter. <laughs> or, you know, or whatever. Whatever it is. A good mentor. A good... It, it, you just... When you have your thing, you will do whatever it takes for it. We whatever were, it takes. We were in the airport, overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. I'm sweating the, so bad, man. By the intensity of this trip... Um, and the run rate that we're playing at. Yeah, I can. God, so can't you on the camera. Sorry. <laughs> um, and you said some people say, I'll whatever do it whatever, it, whatever it some takes. Some people say that, whatever it takes, and some people do whatever it takes. Right. And, and I would argue the difference is purpose. I would say so, How yeah. big is your purpose? Yeah. How strong is it? Yeah. Emotionally. Yeah. Like, you and I were crying in the car in this parking lot when we got to the hotel yesterday mm -hmm. about trying to figure out how to be better men Yeah. and try to work on some of our less than ideal qualities. Um, that's the stuff that people don't know and don't see. And in an effort to, as Evan would say, remove the shine, as we would say, pull back the curtain, like it was really painful to acknowledge some of the mistakes that we've made. Like him owning that temper, right? Like, yeah. So how many people go through their whole life and never own that they had a temper? Mo most people don't have the reason to. Oh, I, I, well, I got emotional yesterday because it was like, I've screwed up every single one of my relationships. Right. And now I have, I finally have, I'm getting emotional talking about it. I finally have what I want and I, I won't, I can't fail at this. I, I won't. I, like, I, I'm crying right now. I, I am so passionate about the podcast. I'm so passionate about Taryn. I'm so passionate about my friends and being a good example that like, when I say this is it, I mean that. I will not fail at this. I will do whatever it fucking takes. I don't care. But, and you would too if you had your thing. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, Alan and I are not superheroes. We just have superhero goals. And in order to capture those goals, we have to do whatever it takes. For you, it, if your child was hurt, you'd wake up at four in the morning and take him to the hospital. Maybe that's your purpose. Right. But that's how you know what your purpose is. When you're willing to do things greater than yourself. You're willing to do things 
that you didn't think you could. You're willing to accomplish things that you didn't think you could accomplish. You're willing to set goals that you never once believed you could get. That's how you know you're living your purpose. That's how you know you're using your purpose as fuel. Well, Fired up. Me too, man. Fired up. Kev's got me tearing up over here too. So, are you willing to fail forward? Yeah. For your purpose? Because of the greater end state. We had um, a team member recently got really upset about a mistake that she made. And it was such a small mistake. Yeah. It's oh, not yeah, a big yeah. deal at all. Yeah. And I said, honestly, I'm glad you made the mistake. Because the mistake is proof you're trying. Right. If you're not making any mistakes, you're not even trying. And I just... This has been a very, very challenging road. It um, has, man. It has. I'm, it's... It almost... We always say, like, nobody will ever know. And I think that's part of the beauty. Right. Like, I, you guys don't need to know. You, you don't probably don't want to know just like and, we won't know your challenges right and if you do ever want to know ask right i'll tell you everything I, I, I will i'll tell you everything and same for me like i love when people reach out to me i know and tell me the deep parts of their story that makes you you but i don't know the in and outs of your life if you're listening tiffany said this recently on one of our mastermind calls she said if if a year ago or however long ago it was a year and a half something like that if i didn't reach out to you alan and tell you um, all of the darkest parts yeah. of what was going on, like real hardship, then we wouldn't be working together right. right now. And then we wouldn't be speaking at Mass Maritime next month. Like, it's amazing what can happen when you're willing to fail. Imagine this. For Tiff, something bigger. Tiff, when I first started working with her, um, I said, send me a 10-minute video and tell of me everything. Story. Yeah. Tell me everything. She would never do that if part of her purpose wasn't to help other people. Right. Why would you do it? There's too much embarrassment. There's too much pain. There's too much uncertainty, discomfort talking in front of the camera. Am I rambling? Like, does anybody actually want to hear this? Right. Your purpose is the reason. Right. It is the reason. You will do more for others than you'll ever do for yourself. Amy gave me a testimonial video that she did 50 takes. Right. 50 takes for a minute and a half long video. And that video is going to do more for her than it ever did for me because she was forcing herself to, to face herself yeah. and to le level up. And she did an awesome job. But why did she do it? Purpose. Right. For me. For this team. To give back. Like, you have to do that. That's make everything. sure And make sure you check in on it, too. Right. Make sure you check in with your pay purpose. Pay attention, some would say. Say, yeah. Some would <laughs> Set say an intention you, and pay attention. Yeah, and then coincidence <laughs> happens. Uh, what do we got for time? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Okay, I got some more questions for Kev. I like this. Before we uh, get too much more emotional. Yeah, that was, that was uh, I think that was the first time I've cried on the podcast. I think. You've been close. But that I, was, that was, close. that was, uh, I know why. I know why. You're in love, my man. I am. Scratching the surface on the power of purpose. One of the things that we've really come to see and understand by interviewing so many world-class human beings, notice how I said human beings there instead of performers, I really want that to be clear, to be the best human being we can, is an obvious common denominator when it comes to clarity of purpose. So basically, I'll rephrase that. One of the, most, one of the things that we've really come to see and understand by interviewing so many world-class human beings is an obvious common denominator when it comes to clarity of purpose. I'll never forget way back when you interviewed me about passion and purpose. So it was episode two. Oh, boy. The name of the episode is called Finding Your Purpose with Alan Lazarus. Um, it was April of 2017 that this was posted, just so everyone knows. Back then, you knew you wanted to be a podcaster, but you were still pretty fuzzy on your purpose compared to now. Take us back. Question, what was it like living without a strong sense of clear purpose? And how has having one now made your life better in terms of your daily actions and who you've become? It's almost like no matter what avenue, no matter where you are in life, you're going to have some sort of pain. You're going to have some sort of, you're going to have something to complain about. Now, whether or not you should actually be complaining or using gratitude, I'm going to say like, I, I do complain. I do. Right. I, I think it's human nature. In an effort to solve it though. Well, yes, but. Hopefully. But. How do you solve it if you don't know why you're complaining? Right. I think that's where I was. I was complaining about a lot of stuff, but I had no... Like what? What was I complaining about back then? I was probably complaining about traveling for work. I was probably complaining about... I think I was single at that time. Right? I was single at that time. Yeah, you were. Um, 
I was probably complaining about a lot of petty shit, honestly. But but the thing is, like, if you're unhappy in your life, I was I was probably unhappy in my life, and there was only certain things that gave me happiness. Now I'm happy in my life, and there's only certain things that give me unhappiness. Interesting. And the only reason is I did more of what made me happy less of what didn't make me happy and now the only things that make me unhappy are still in alignment with my happiness right does that make sense and your purpose right well it's a deeper meaning that's you have a deeper meaning now it's a lot easier to be unhappy that i have to fly across the country knowing that it doesn't matter that i'm still gonna do it because it's part of my purpose i know it's it's a different life it's it's basically like I'm trying to climb this mountain, and this part sucks. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, this is a tough part here. I got to jump, and I got to do this, and I right. might slip and miss. And I don't know how to climb it yet. Right. I'm, like, figuring it out as I as go. As opposed to somebody just hanging on the side of the mountain being like, ah, this really sucks. They don't even know if they're climbing. They don't know if they want to climb. Right. They don't, they don't know, know what mountain they're on. Right. And I think that's where a lot of people, like, getting clear, in order to get clear on what life you want to live, you first have to get clear on the life that you think you want. And like, what do you want to bring to the world? And then let that change too. It's going to change. Let, it's going to evolve yeah, gonna as change. you do. I but see you that need, all the time. But you need it in order to start and it won't change. Dude, two years ago, like not even two years ago, a year ago, I wanted to have a podcast called The High, H-I-G-H <laughs> per <laughs> conscious podcast. Like a spin-off oh, yeah, of this right, right. where I sit down and smoke weed with rappers and talk about <laughs> deep stuff. That's gone. I don't, I don't have any goal. I want to do my own spin-off eventually. I love right. podcasting. Right. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I want it to be something like that, maybe, right. but I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe you know drinking whiskey with people would be cool, but is that something I want to do every week? I don't know. I don't <laughs> we'll know. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. So the future is bright. The future is bright. So one thing I want to bring to the listeners: uh, what do we got for time? Oh, it's four four thirty six. Hammering down. It here. is. It's going quick. So I'll I'll basically I notice things. I try to notice things. I'm trying to be more observant these days. I notice we have a new studio. Those of you who have been listening know this. Um, it's down in the basement, and it's bigger and better, but it's um, when we shifted from the old one to the new one, there was some growing pains. If you notice the camera angles are not good, that is my bad. <laughs> um, I noticed that Kevin brought a picture of him and Taryn um, down with him at his desk. Little, little. I don't even know if I'd call it a desk. It's a yeah. real, real crappy little yeah. table <laughs> that Kevin works at because um, sometimes he comes early and or I'm late, one of those two. Um <laughs> And when we were packing the stuff to come to L.A. and San Diego on this trip, I noticed he said, can you put that picture of Taryn in my laptop bag? So the reason why he did that is a reminder of his why. Because when the suck gets really sucky, which it does, it really freaking does, you need to be reminded of why you're doing it. Because it will make the suck meaningful. It's going to suck no matter what might as well make it mean something greater. Um, and that's something I wanted to bring. The, the thing is, it's like a lot of people think their life sucks. Imagine if you could... It's, there's always going to be suck, like you said. Right, Imagine no if you what. could... The suck could be directed towards something you love instead. Right. Exactly. And more of it. Yeah. More and more and more right. of it. Right. Yeah. And then eventually you have a life that has less and less suck. And, and that sucks more and more meaningful and more and more love. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're trying to do. That's designed. That's that, lifestyle design. Yeah, I mean, some would say. that picture <laughs> is on my is on my um, my bookshelf next next on my bed of Taryn and I. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a she, reminder. She wrote me a note. She always writes me travel notes. I told you that. I know. Like I, she puts it in my wallet or she puts it in my lap. She always hides it, and then I find it, and it's like little heart notes. Yeah, she they're, they're on it. they're on heart um, post it notes. But it, dude, that is part of my why. She said this morning I woke up to a text. She sent it last night when she went to bed. I bought her a stuffed animal, stuffed goat. Uh, his name's KJ. <laughs> the and, goat. Um, the goat. <laughs> and she took a picture of him and said, KJ and I miss you and we appreciate how hard... I'm going to fucking cry again. Um, mm-hmm. How hard and how much you're willing to sacrifice to make all of our lives better. And that's, that's what I am doing. Like, it's not just about me. It's about you. It's about, it's about everybody. Like you always say, I'm trying to bring the team up. I, I'm trying to create the team, and I'm trying to bring the team up, and I want to give everybody that believed in me a better life. Like that's that's why I, it's not. This isn't just for me. This is for everybody. So, all the love today and crying. We, we don't always <laughs> cry, guys. Like I know you probably think we do, but 
I'm laughing and crying. Yeah, One of the most beautiful experiences. Tony Robbins says that. If you ever laughed and cried at the same time, yeah, yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's a lot. It's, uh, it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, one of the th- is that why you were talking? I, I I heard Kevin on the phone with Taryn, and he was talking about KJ. Yeah, I'm KJ's like, the, the KJ's KJ, the KJ, man. Go. <laughs> yeah, me, like, oh, that's funny. Now I know. Okay, so uh, scratching the surface on the power of purpose. Th- Some would say question. scratching the cur- the surface, crying a lot is what they would say. Probably. Right, that's what we'll call this episode: yes. crying a lot. One minute and twenty seconds. Here Hammer we go. It. I heard a story once about how JFK visited the NASA Space Center and saw a man holding a broom and asked, "What are you doing?" The man replied, Mr. President, I'm helping put a man on the moon. To me, I'm sure it's obvious by now that I believe purpose is everything. Question for the listeners, Kevin. (laughs) That's me. What are some examples of small, tedious, seemingly menial tasks that suck, that actually fulfill you now because of the power of purpose? Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Things that suck... I mean, making teaser clips, I don't like it, but it's like, now I'm thinking to myself, like, what would help somebody in their moment right. where they'd see this and be like, wow, that's, I needed that. You know, that, that to me is huge because I don't, I'm not always a huge fan of doing it. Um, that's a perfect example. The teaser clip you don't make can't help anyone. Right. The, and the travel, man. Right. Like, imagine oh, yeah. this. <laughs> I used to travel every week, like we're traveling now, not on the plane. But not for a greater but purpose. But no, it was, I was miserable. I hated uh, it. Yeah, man. Now... And it's funny because people would see my snaps and see my story. And I wasn't big on Instagram. I don't think I was posting a lot on Instagram, but they would see that. Yoked. There wasn't even a story on Instagram at that point. I don't no, think. no, there Jesus. wasn't. Wow. <laughs> that, wow. Um, but they would see that and be like, oh, that must be so cool. No, it wasn't. This is cool. That's what, A lot of the stuff I post now is because people want to do the traveling, and that's fine. Right. But I want you to see the behind the scenes of why we're actually traveling. We're not traveling for... A vacation. For vacation. It's not, for, it's not just for pleasure. There is pleasure in the oh, purpose. Sure. Yeah. And that's the takeaway for this episode. There is pleasure in your purpose. There's more pleasure in your purpose than the shiny objects you're chasing exactly. for pleasure. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. That's the takeaway. There is more pleasure in your purpose and a desire to serve others. The shiny objects are just a byproduct. Right. The shiny objects go away. They, they, it, the, it's pleasurable for a moment. Pleasurable, this is pleasurable, pleasurable for pleasurable, right. Pleasurable. That's a great scene. Um, so the dramatic reading is one sent, two sentences. Hammer it. Uh, dramatic reading. This is a speech that I've listened to, basically during my morning mindset, m- morning mindset workout every day. Talk. Right. <laughs> Calls himself a speecher. Every day for the last four years, four plus, probably five. Honestly, every single day. I listened to it this morning with one AirPod in because Kevin was sleeping, and then I turned the light on and woke him up. That's my bad. Yeah, turn the light on in my face. It starts with this. Whatever you want to do, do it now. There are only so many tomorrows. So whatever your purpose is, the only mistake is to not look for it, to not try to find it, to not try new things. You're not going to regret. I always say it. You're not going to regret the stuff you tried and failed at. You are going to regret the stuff you never even tried. That's all I've got. And use your pain to find your purpose. Like, look at where I get fired up the most. It's Mm. the stuff that I didn't have i lacked i want to bring more to the world you know it's that's that's what it is take a look into your past take a look into what fires you up take a look in, into what makes you passionate about what moves you because that's probably part of what you should be doing whatever gets you emotional is what's going to move you the most if you use it for your purpose what are we doing next so after this is going to be this is friday so, so dave uh, dave's going to drop wow yeah. so we had an episode where we interviewed dave but He's also going to put it on his YouTube channel and his podcast as well. Yeah. In studio. It was amazing. Uh, we don't have any time to really tease it because we are the worst. It was a hell of a fire drill. Um, it was 30 minutes. And again, it was one of the most difficult reps we've ever done, but most most rewarding. Yeah, we went deep. We went deep on, yeah. Oh, yeah. on, on all the things. So make sure you don't miss that. You guys always, uh, all the Dave episodes do really well. So we know you guys will love that. And we will talk to you on Sunday. Talk to you soon. Bye.